So in this video, we are going to take a look at an interesting dilution calculation question which was asked by one of the viewers on the YouTube channel and we've done several dilution calculation questions on the channel but this question has a slightly different twist and I think it will be of tremendous benefit to solve it for the entire community. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa. And if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to the question. The question says, how much of thioridazine, 100 mg per 5 ml and 25 mg per 5 ml should be mixed together to get 300 ml of thioridazine with a concentration of 50 mg per 5 ml? So the request was to use the allegation method to solve this question so i'm going to go ahead and do that but i'm also going to show you how you can solve the same question using the algebraic method as well so now let's get into how you can actually use the allegation method the first thing that we need to do is actually take these concentrations which is the 100 milligrams per 5 milliliters the 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters and then the 50 milligrams per 5 milliliters we need to take these concentrations and convert them to percentage strength. It's just going to make it a little bit more manageable when we get to using the allegation method itself. And so just so we're on the same page, we need to also be able to identify for the allegation method which of these concentrations is the higher concentration, the lower concentration. And we do know what the desired is, which is the 50 milligrams per 5 ml. But let's go ahead and do the conversion of these concentration to the percentage strength. And so the way it will work is we'll start off with the 100 milligrams per 5 milliliters. And what that will look like is we have the 100 milligrams per 5 milliliters. We'll go ahead and convert the milligrams to grams. And so we have a thousand milligrams being equal to one gram. That's the conversion factor. So the milligrams cancel out and we will end up with 0 0.1 one gram in five milliliters now the reason we are doing this is by the definition of percentage strength it's some amount of grams in a hundred ml so by doing this we can go ahead and quickly set up the proportion and say how many grams is present in a hundred milliliters and once we solve for the x which is our unknown here that will give us the percentage strength so we'll go ahead and solve for x. x is going to be equal to 0 0.1 gram times 100 milliliters divided by 5 milliliters. And that is going to be equal to 2%. We're going to do the same thing for the 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters. And so here we have 25 milligrams divided by 5 milliliters. We convert the milligrams to grams. So 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram the milligrams cancel out and this would actually give us 0 0.025 grams in five milliliters and then we set up the proportion to determine how many grams we present in 100 milliliters and so we can go ahead and solve for y which is our unknown so y equals 0 0.025 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 5 milliliters and we end up with 0 0.5 percent so we now know that the 100 milligrams per 5 ml is actually the higher strength which is the two percent and then the 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters is the lower strength now let's go ahead and convert the desired concentration which is the 50 milligrams per 5 ml into percentage strength as well and so the way that would actually work is we would have 50 milligrams per 5 milliliters. We convert the milligrams to grams. So a thousand milligrams is equivalent to one gram. Now the milligrams cancel out and we end up with 0 0.05 grams in five milliliters. We set up a proportion. So that's equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters and we solve for the unknown which is z so z equals 0 0.05 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 5 milliliters and that is equal to one percent 
So now that we know all the percentage strengths, we can go ahead and set up our allegation grid. And so what that would look like is you have your two vertical lines and your two horizontal lines. And the way the allegation method works is your higher concentration goes to the top left, your lower concentration goes to the bottom left, and your desired concentration goes in the middle. So for this example, the higher concentration is the 2%, so that goes to the top left. Then the lower concentration is going to be 0.5, so that goes to the bottom left. And then the desired concentration is 1, and that goes in the middle. Now, if you need a more in-depth tutorial on how to use the allegation method, I'm going to put links to several videos in the description, and I'm going to link it in the cards as well. Now, for this example, what we need to do next is to be able to determine the number of parts of each of the components. So we need the number of parts of the 0.5% and the number of parts of the 2% preparation. And so the way that will work is to determine the number of parts of the 0.5%, we are going to go ahead and subtract the desired concentration, which is 1, from the higher concentration, which is 2. So 2 minus 1 is going to be 1, and that goes in the bottom right. So what that means is we have one part of the 0.5% solution. Now we also need to determine the number of parts of the 2%. And the way that works is you take the lower strength, which is 0.5 in this example, and subtract that from the desired concentration, which is 1. So 1 minus 0.5 gives us 0.5. And that implies you have 0.5 parts of the 2% solution. Now, because we've been given the total volume, what we also need is the total parts. And the way we get that is to add the 0.5 to the 1. So 0 0.5 plus 1, that gives us 1.5. So the total part is 1.5. So now that we've determined the number of parts of each of the solutions that we are mixing together, as well as the total parts, we can go ahead and now determine the actual quantities. So the first thing that we want to actually go ahead and do is determine the amount of the 2% solution. And the way we will do that is we will take the parts of the 2%, which is 0 0.5, so we have 0 0.5 and then we will divide that by the total parts which we determine to be 1.5 and that is going to be equal to some quantity in milliliters divided by the total volume that we want to make which is 300 milliliters so the reason we have the total parts in the denominator here is because we've been given the total volume now we can go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown and so x is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times 300 milliliters divided by 1.5. And that gives us 100 milliliters. So we need 100 milliliters of the 2% solution or the 100 milligrams per 5 ml solution for this preparation. Now, to determine the amount of the 0.5% solution, the fastest way is actually to do a quick subtraction. We will subtract the volume that is needed for the 2% from the total volume, and that should give us the amount of the 0.5%. So what that would look like is we'll have the 300 milliliters minus the 100 milliliters, and that is going to be equal to 200 milliliters. So we need 200 milliliters of the 0.5% solution. We will mix that with 100 milliliters of the 2% solution. We will end up with 300 milliliters total volume, which has a concentration of 1%. Now, the other way you can actually find the volume of the 0.5% solution is to also take the parts. You take the parts of the 0.5%, which is 1, divided by the total parts, which is 1.5. And then you set that equal to some volume in milliliters divided by 300 milliliters. And then when you solve for y, y is going to be equal to 1 times 300 divided by 1.5. And that is going to be equal to 200 milliliters. So that is how you would use the allegation method to solve this question. Now let's take a look at how we will solve this same question using the algebraic method. Now for the algebraic method, because we have two components that we are mixing here, the equation that we'll be using is going to be C1Q1 plus C2Q2 equals C final Q final. 
Now, C1 is the concentration of the first component, Q1 is the quantity of the first component, C2 is the concentration of your second component, Q2 is the quantity of the second component, and then CF is your final concentration, and QF is the final quantity. So from the question, the C1 is actually going to be equal to 100 milligrams per 5 milliliters. The Q1, we don't know, so we're going to just leave that as Q1. Then for C2, that is going to be the 25 milligrams per 5 ml. And Q2, we do not know, so we're going to leave that as Q2. Then the C final is going to be equal to the final concentration, which is 50 milligrams per 5 milliliters. And the Q final is actually given us 300 milliliters. So we can now go ahead and substitute all of these values into the original equation. And what that would look like is we will have 100 milligrams divided by 5 milliliters times Q1 plus 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters times Q2. And that should be equal to 50 milligrams per 5 milliliters times 300 milliliters. Now, because we have 5 milliliters in the denominator on both sides of the equation, we can simply multiply each term by 5 milliliters to get rid of the 5 milliliters. And now what we have is 100 Q1 plus 25 Q2 equal to 50 times 300. Now, it's important to note that Q1 plus Q2 equals 300. And so Q2 is equal to 300 minus Q1. So we need to substitute wherever we see Q2, we need to substitute 300 minus Q1 so that we have one equation with one variable and then we can solve for Q1. And so we substitute this equation into this particular equation. And so we have 100 Q1 plus 25 300 minus q1 being equal to 15,000. and now what remains is the algebra so we continue with the algebra and what that would look like is we'll have 100 q1 plus we need to distribute the 25 over the 300 and the 25 over the q1 and so we will have 100 q1 plus 7,500, which is 25 times 300, minus 25Q1, equal to 15,000. So a more simplified form of this equation would be 100Q1 minus 25Q1 being equal to 15,000 minus 7,500. And so 100Q1 minus 25Q1 is 75 q1 and that is going to be equal to 7500 divide both sides by 75 and then q1 equals 100 milliliters so you need 100 milliliters of the 100 milligrams per 5 ml solution and so to find the quantity of the 25 milligram per 5 ml solution which is q2 we can actually go ahead and use this equation so Q2 is going to be equal to 300 milliliters minus Q1, which implies that you're going to have 300 milliliters minus 100 milliliters, and that gives us 200 milliliters for Q2. And so what that means is we need to take 200 milliliters of the 25 milligrams per 5 ml solution, mix that with 100 milliliters of the 100 milligrams per 5 milliliter solution and we'll end up with 300 milliliters of the 50 milligram per 5 ml solution now if you need more examples on the algebraic method there are several of them on the channel so i'll put links to some of the videos in the description and i'll link it in the cards as well so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.